Howdy folks, Kirk and Jay here with Kirk Giordano Plastering with another tip about veneer plastering. What is veneer plastering? It is gypsum with veneer in it. What is veneer? It is a limestone. You take the limestone, you do some magic to it, you make it into a putty or a powder, you mix it into the uh, gypsum and you've got it. Anyhow, what we're prepared to do today is a fella here he uh, gave it his best shot to uh, do this chimney here, watching our videos. Uh, this chimney is brick. You can see the brick right here. Now, what did he use? He used plaster of Paris. Anybody know why or even care why it's called plaster of Paris? It's called plaster of Paris because it's from Paris, one of the biggest gypsum yards in the world, actually. And they make casts with it because it's set so fast. Five, ten minutes, it's set. Material we're using, we have about a half hour for that right there. Now, here's some of the myths, guys. I wanna, I wanna clear this up because I'm the one that created a lot of these. Uh, they're not myths, they're just do's and don'ts. I show a lot of work where we'll use sheetrock and I'll put one eighth of an inch of the veneer base coat or the diamond uh, finished base coat. Why? Because they have sand in it. They're, they're much stronger. The finished coat has no sand in it. It has a lot of fat and lime so you can play with it. So Right here, I'm going a quarter inch thick. I always tell folks, you go a sixteenth to an eighth. But can you go a quarter? Yes. Can you go a half inch? Yes. You can, but you better know what you're doing. Can, say, say for example, a base coat is an eighth of an inch thick. And if you had old wood lath and it's an inch thick, can you fill that with base coat? Yes. What will happen? It's going to hairline crack when it's done. But you've got to put a finished coat anyway. So I'm trying to dispel a lot of the my own work that I'm telling folks, well, gee, do this, don't do that. And it got too serious because folks call me and say, Kirk, what happens if I use a little extra? Nothing. Nothing happens. I'll show you how, how we're doing it. Obviously, I put these corners on because I don't want to impress the heck out of you guys and spend forever and put a rod here and make my corner, nor do I want to build it up and use my corner tool. This is a lot faster. Okay, we're going to get started with just the bottom first, guys, because we have a bucket of mud here that Jay made and what kind of mud is this? It's diamond. Diamond is again simply um, a gypsum plaster with limestone in it and that's what gives it its strength. You are not going to put a thumbtack through this guys. Tape and mud you can put a thumbtack through. Now as I'm putting this on I'm, I know one thing guys that obviously a lot of you homeowners don't recognize that if I lay it on fat, I could bring it back to life. So I can bring this back to life, and I can see right now my, my trowel is a bit cockeyed. What, what does that mean? I'm putting it on, and I can see where it's not, it's not doing what it's supposed to do, but uh, no big deal. I got my big trowel down there to, to finish that up. Okay, for the corner, for example, I'm going to take this here. I'm going to fill this corner. Now, most of you folks who look at what we do and say, oh, you can't do that. Uh, actually, you can do that if you know what you're doing. And any, any clinkers on the bottom, get rid of it because what will happen? You'll pull those clinkers up when you put the trowel on the tile. Like, here's a clinker. I don't want that. Get out of there. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and use this bucket up real quick. And again, this corner aid here. Yeah, I'm going a lot fatter than, than what diamond is intentionally used for. But you can do that, guys, again, if you know what you're doing. So I'm going a little bit fatter. And by the way, I was going to show a level 5 on this, which I think I will anyway. And then I'm going to do a skip trial finish. I'm going to do a level 5 just because I can and to show you folks. It's not that big of a deal. A lot of, a lot of people call and say, hey, you don't show a level 5. You can't do it. It's like... Guys, we can do anything with this stuff. Okay, so I'm going to build this chimney out right here. The fireplace insert obviously is not here, which is good, because if it was in here, I'd say take it out so we can do this. We're going to take that, take that. And down here, there's, there's no base coat. Is it a big deal? Not really, because this will set anyway, but that's where it takes a little bit more experience, because if you do it without a base coat, it tends to want to blister or 
pop off. So you just got to know how to handle it in that kind of situation. And I'll show you how we handle it. Now, now again, my child's a bit cockeyed. And that's okay, because I have another one over here that I'll fix that with. And when I say it's cockeyed, it's bowed in the wrong direction. Like a banana, we want it, I want this trowel here to go this way. If it's bowed inward, which it is a little bit, uh, when I go to finish, I'll use my other one, which is perfectly straight. Why is that one perfectly straight? Because it's been on the truck and it's new. No one's had a chance to beat it up yet. Okay, so I'm filling out my corner here. Filling out my corner. Taking some mud. And filling this out. A lot of folks say, gee whiz, you're not a real plaster because you take the mud from the bottom. Guys, it really doesn't matter if you take the mud from the top or the bottom as long as you get the job done. Say, for example, I take it off the top here and put it here, pull it off the top. It, it makes no difference, guys. You pull it off the top, no difference. As long as you can get it done, you get it done. Okay, so we got that done. We'll put some more on it. And now, two, when you're using this particular diamond or the plaster of Paris that this fellow used, it sets fast. What sets it even faster? Anybody know? Anybody care? Suction. Like right now, we're going over. We're going over a plaster, so that plaster is sucking the moisture right out of this one. So, therefore, we got less time to use this one. Um, we, when it starts to set, I'll, that's what I'm going to show in this particular one. When it starts to set, how oh, we could bring it back to life. It's easy to bring this plaster back to life. One of the reasons why I like using it so much, here's uh, a bonding agent. Um, I advise anybody who's doing plaster like this to use a bonding agent. Did these folks? No. But a lot of these materials say you don't need a bonding agent. Old Kirk says, bull, you do. And I use them all the time. Okay, you can't see this side over here. It's just brick. Now this side you can't see. But for the sake of showing you guys. I'm not, not going to bore you with doing the top, this side of this here. I'm going to finish this area right here just to prove a point. Okay. Now, obviously I'm going to need a square chow to get in here. I'll put that there. That there. Get my bottom. Actually need a margin chow right in there, but no worries. We'll get that in a bit. Uh, okay. I'll give it a little fat. Why do I give it a little fat? What is a little fat? A little fat is excess. A little extra mud because I'm going to bring that mud back to life. Just kind of like that Frankenstein movie. Bring it back to life and use it again. All right. So let me get this right there. It's about the only place I need that. And the square child is handy right here too. I'm putting it fat. Putting it fat because I want to use that fat. All right, now that I've got that, this coat is good for, say, 15 minutes. Then if, if I want it, I can take water and put the water on it, and I could bring it back to life. Only about a 30 seconds of an inch will come off the fat, so I could use that to make this like glass if I wanted to, but I don't need to do that because we're doing a skip trial finish. Okay, I'm going to take my, my other trial, which... Let's see this guy. That's a lot straighter because it's only been used a few times. And when the guys throw it on the truck, they kind of bend them. All right, so here we're going to go. We're going to take one more coat here and make it true level and plumb. And I'm going to give it some excess fat. Take it off. Take it off. Now I'm, uh, I'm giving myself some... Uh, eased by that corner aid there. If I didn't have that corner aid there, I'd have to make that corner. And yeah, I can make it, but it takes a lot longer to make them. Okay, so I'm making this true plumb and level. 
and I'm using this big trowel as a rod. So I'm only going to show this part here. Then I'm going to finish everything else up, but not on camera. But I'm going to come back to this and show you how to bring it back to life. Because that's what I want to show you on this one here, guys. Because too many people are panicking saying, gee, how much time do I have with it? It's, I'm going to lose it. You're not going to lose it, guys, if you know how to bring it back to life. That's what I'm going to show you on this. Okay, so we got a little clinker here. Anytime you get a clinker, guys, pull it out. Get rid of it because it'll, it'll mess you up. You'll keep hitting it. Okay, we're going to bring this out. Bring this out here, here. And then I'm just filling this up. Uh, because we started with a finish that was so um, rough. That's the word I'm looking for. It was kind of rough. So we're going to put a little heavier. And I'll show you why in a minute. And again, this, this video is just to show you how much time you have. And if you run out of time, what to do about it. Certainly not panic, because we don't panic. We just say, okay, let's do this with it. Now right here, i got to bring this corner out. Now keep in mind, guys, I am going a quarter inch thick because I have to. I have to go a quarter inch thick in order to bring out all the grounds to make them true and level. Now, okay, so that's, and I'm actually, you see, you see where it's starting to turn colors right there. That just means that's thin right there while the rest is thick. No worries. We take it and we put another coat, another thin coat. Yeah, another thin coat, guys. And then now I'm just going to make it true and plumb. This is called uh, just troweling it. Troweling it down. You could use a rod if you want, but if you use a trowel this big right here, you don't need a rod. Now, one of the things that happens when you go real thick, see it's kind of bubbling right here. That's okay. That's, it's too thick. We leave that alone for a while. In fact, I'm going to come back to this right here where it's bubbling. And that's what happens if you put diamond on too thick. But it'll bubble like this, it'll blister. You just, what I'm prepared to do is after I finish the rest, I'm going to come back to that little bubbling and that blistering stuff, wet it with water and bring it back to life and fix it. So when I get to that stage, guys, I'll show you. But right now, I'm going to finish using the mud we have. And... Uh, doing these sides and the tops, so I'm not going to bore you with another 10 minutes of me uh, applying it on here, so we'll come back to that. All right, guys, we've given it about a half hour to get to the stage where I, I want to show you what happens if you don't do a base coat and you just do a fat two coats of finish. It really takes a lot of practice, so I don't usually show it, but I figured we'll show it now because I have an opportunity. And too many people are saying, hey, how do you do this? By the way, another rainy day, guys. Jason is wearing this. He's soaked. Uh, hey, a mirror. <laughs> he always gets the crappy job of working outside, having to mix in the rain where I just stay inside. But anyway, guys, here's what I want to show you. And this is why I don't show a lot of videos of a lot of things we do behind the scenes. We film maybe one out of 20 interior jobs because there's a lot of stuff that goes on. The fellow here watched our video and he gave it his best shot. But there's so many things. You need at least three to four years of doing this every day to do what we're about to do. Okay, can you get a close-up of the spider checking? That spider checking right there occurred right here too as it's drying and it occurred uh, a few other places. Right now, I, I would call this a level two finish, a level three. What's well, a level one, two to five? Well, a level one, two to five, five being perfect, one being just one coat of tape and mud. Now notice, uh, and two just being one coat of tape and mud and you cover all your corners and tape. Three, uh, still looks like crap. Four, now you gotta do two coats. Five is what, I'm about to show you and then I'm going to take it back down to a skip trial. You got to wet the wall guys if you're going to uh, try to do what I'm doing now. And this I don't show folks because it takes a lot of years to learn it. 
you wet the wall, you wet your trowel, then you just take the trowel and you just, oh, you trowel it. And what that does is it gives it a high gloss sheen. It, it sort of looks like glass when you're done if you trowel it a lot. But that's what I'm going to do right here to remove this. Okay, the first thing I want to do now is take my handy dandy dollar brush. These are the most, <laughs> the tool that I use the most right here is this little dollar brush. Okay, now I got big cracks up here. You can't see that, but this little dollar brush gets all these guys right here, gets my corners. I don't use a tip, I use the edge. It gets right here in the crack and down in here. Now I take this little dollar brush here and get this corner too. Okay, and get my edges here. Now, because I have all these cracks, and I expected that, and I expected this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this back to life. Why am I going to bring it back to life? Because I'm going to use some of the excess fat. You see the trial here. Now, this, again, I don't show a lot, of, a lot of folks this stuff because most folks won't get it because it does take a lot of practice. Okay, you've got to wet the whole thing. Whether or not you're using a green sponge float like I'm using, a spray bottle, um, a felt brush, which is a plasterer's felt brush, a hundred other tools, just wet the wall. And I keep a wet sponge float with me too. Why? Because I want to clean my trowel. I clean this and I keep it wet. The last thing too, guys, don't use a big trowel like this. Use a small, use a square 14 by 5 if you can. All right, now this wall's wet. Now here's the idea. It uh, doesn't have the base coat, which I usually use because they did it. All right, now I'm going to take the trowel here, and I'm going to bring some fat out. Now this takes some serious elbow grease, guys. You've got to use some pressure. I would say I'm using the pressure of, say, curling a 35-pound dumbbell. Okay? I'm going hard, and I'm, I'm putting it on its edge. When I put it on its edge like this, you see that? It's on its edge. I bring the fat out. That fat is going to correct these hairline cracks and it's going to correct any other thing that I may have, like exposed wire. You take it, and you can see it's turning dark. When it turns dark, that means it's drying, but you can bring it back to life once, sometimes even twice if you're really good. I just had an imperfection here. So I'm going to take it to a level five. That's called a level five right there, where there's no imperfections. Take it. I have some boo-boos right here. We call them holidays. Okay, now I, I don't want to go over anything dry, so I wet it. I keep wetting it. We don't want to go over the dry stuff. Or, what happens when you go over the dry stuff? It blisters, it pops, it peels. So, now I want to hit this also, because I want to, I want to give it a level 5, guys, just to show you how easy it is to do a level 5 with this, as opposed to taping mud. You just keep going back over it, back over it, back over it. And when it dries, put some more water on it. Okay, now I'm bringing it back to life. Both which ways? And look at that trowel. It's on edge. It's not flat like this. If I go flat, I'm giving it a skip trowel. It's on edge. And guys, stainless steel tools work better for doing this. Uh, the sharper the edge, the better you can get it. Now. Now notice, this wall is, see there's an imperfection there. Camera may not show it, but I can see it. I'm taking some of the fat that's on here. I'm putting it in that imperfection. And now I'm taking the trowel and getting it out. That's how you do it, guys. Where it's turning dark right here, that means it is almost dry. So I am right at the level I want this. That's dry. This is dry. See how it's turning dark gray? That's all drying. It's all drying. And they're going to paint this anyhow, guys. I'm, uh, I'm just killing time because I can. Uh, but I thought I'd show you how to get a level five. And we're actually, Jay just mixed me up some soupy mud because I'm going to texture this now. I didn't need to get it this smooth, but so many folks saying, gee, Kirk, you don't know how to do a level five. It's like, come on, guys. Anybody can do a level five. Uh, especially with this particular mud here. And that's, that's achieved with no sanding. If you try to do it with tape and mud, a level five requires a lot of sand. You fill your whole house with dust. That's not what we do, guys. Anyway, 
you've seen, you've seen how easy it is with two coats, but yet you really got to have some time in to know when these products set, what to do when they start to spider check. So that's why I always show you guys do a base coat first with the sand in it and then come back with your finished coat, which has no sand, but has a lot of lime. Lime has a lot of fat. And then when you bring it back to life, you take that fat and you can just play with it and make it smooth if you wish. Anyway, my name is Kirk, Jason on the camera. We thank you folks for watching and as usual, see you guys on the next one. Once again, folks, we thank you for watching and I really enjoy all your comments. If you guys like this video, please click the like button down below. And also, if you enjoy what we do, subscribe to our channel so we can keep making these videos for you. My name is Kirk. And Jay. We thank you for watching. And from the entire Giordano family, we'll, we'll see you on the next one. one.